Would you, could you drink cocktails with a fox? Would you, could you drink cocktails from a box? I've drunk cocktails from a man. Wait a minute. <laughs> You know, I've drunk cocktails from a can. I've drunk them from a shaker. I've drunk them from a glass. I've had them even from a bottle. But one thing I've never done in all my days is drink cocktails from a box. It's a box review. We're gonna look at boxed cocktails like we looked at canned cocktails and see if they're worth drinking. There is no darn good reason that a cocktail from a box has to be worse than a cocktail from a can or a bottle. And yet, we know that that's not true. Mary, where do you want me to start? Left, right, daiquiri? What are you in the mood for? Sangria we've got, daiquiri, we got margarita, we got Negroni, the big red X. I think you gotta start with a margarita. That's usually a pretty good like benchmark of what you're dealing with. When you get the box of cocktails, you gotta, ow, ah, you gotta, you gotta tap the big. And now we're good to go. It's a party. We got ourselves a box. Uh, margarita white, white wine. Wait, I didn't read this. I think we fucked up. Salted lime margarita white wine with natural flavors colored with paprika. Contains 12.3% juice from concentrate. It does say made with real fruit juice. <laughs> what is the percentage of alcohol? 13.5%. I mean, is... that's most canned cocktails. Yeah, that's what a, a cocktail should probably line up at. But are you telling me there's no tequila in this? Dude, I think we got taken. I'm gonna put it on ice. It's very satisfying squish. It's just aggressive. Yeah. Boxerita. It does smell like a margarita. It smells strongly like tequila. That is shocking. Tastes like wine. Tastes like wine. Tastes like lime and wine. What is happening? Why did you call that a margarita? Colored with paprika, too. I just love that we just throw a little paprika in there to make it a little <laughs> color. That's wine colored! How much paprika did you add? Would it have been straight up clear beforehand? It must have been. I can only imagine it would have been water clear. What if you put this in a bottle and called it a wine cooler? This would be an amazing wine cooler. This is what you want a wine cooler to taste like. When we did the wine coolers recently. I had the sweet white jacket on. And those drinks were so sweet. They were so sweet. They were gross. They were a lot lower proof too. They were 3% most of those. But this is 12.5%. The thing of it is, it's like a weird trick. Because you're like, mm, margarita, mm, margarita, margarita. Where'd it go? It's weird. It like suddenly turns into wine. I think if you told people it was a margarita, you'd probably get away with it at your party. Nobody would even realize. But I don't know how they're doing that. Like it's crazy how much it smells like tequila. It would be a pretty sweet margarita. Try it. I, I don't know. I think you're gonna be somewhat pleasantly surprised. I mean, I, I would never call that a margarita because it wouldn't satisfy my definition of a margarita. But I think most people are actually gonna be pretty okay with that. If you set that up at a party in a backyard by the pool, I don't think anybody's gonna care. You get away with it. For having zero tequila in it, I bet this will satisfy most people's definitions of a margarita. It's way better than I expected it to be. Like, way better. All right, let's uh, do the sangria next. This smells like strawberries. Strawberry lime, man, they really, they bury the lead. It's rose sangria, strawberry lime, rose sangria. Rose wine with natural flavors. I mean, there are pictures on there that now I'm interpreting as strawberries. Honestly, I feel this, like this is deceptive. I haven't sipped this yet, but when I say it smells like strawberries, I mean, it smells like strawberry candy explosion. Like a strawberry shortcake doll or something from the 80s. that. That has a really powerful artificial strawberry flavor. And then something that they're trying to say is a lime flavor, a non-specific acidity. That's just fucking, that's gross. This is back to the bad wine coolers. This is the wine coolers for people who just want to drink sugar water and have it make them a little drunk. Actually pretty drunk because that's 10%. This is actually pretty full proof, but it don't taste like that. It just tastes like melted strawberry Jolly Ranchers, but worse. Somebody likes it. I don't know if enough people are gonna like it to justify two and a, or a liter and a half of it being at your party to be honest. Well, right after this, we're gonna move on to some more box tales. Welcome back to my own personal hell. Uh, okay, let's do the daiquiri from Craft House. 
So this is supposedly a, a daiquiri. Made with pineapple infused aged rum. Oh, it says pineapple daiquiri. Uh, real lime and aromatic bitters. Wow, aromatic bitters, fascinating. Wow, they even get more specific. Check this out, they don't, on the front they keep it minimal. Our Craft House Pineapple Daiquiri pays homage to the venerable classic with a signature twist. Combining award-winning plantation Stiggins fancy pineapple rum. That is coveted rum, that's good rum. Five-year-old Barbados rum, we're not specific there, but that's okay. Lime, cane sugar, and aromatic bitters, it is a perfection in the glass. A favorite of professional mixologists worldwide, this daiquiri will soon become a staple of all your parties and events. I wonder if it will. My expectations are lifted. That is good. It doesn't taste like a, necessarily a daiquiri, but it is a tasty pineapple cocktail. I like that a lot. I'm awestruck. Pineapple, rum funk, molasses, caramel, burning sugar notes, for sure, and lime. It's, it's excellent. Great, awesome. Thank you, Craft House. You got any more of these? What else do you make? My only complication I have is that it doesn't really, to me, read as a daiquiri, but if it's a pineapple daiquiri, it reads as a pineapple daiquiri, and it's good. I wanna know what you think of this. I, I think that's actually a quality drink. Oh, yeah. If that got served to me at a bar, I would believe that somebody made it. And you'd be happy about it. Sure. I would too. Yeah. I'm really curious about what else they make like that. God damn it. Do we do like a whole craft house episode now? Do we have to redo canned and bottle cocktails? Have they gotten better? Well done, craft house. Shit. I'm going to keep this. I'm putting this in my fridge. My wife and I will have these. <laughs> wow. Wow, wow, wow. I have to rethink some things and um, I got to think about a lot now. Um, I'm going to be right back after this. Now, moving on to the Negroni. You love a big red X. You love it. It's so good for the thumbnail. Gin, bitter liqueur, white wine with natural flavors, and cochineal extract. Cochineal extract is red dye. Sounds very fancy, but that's the uh, uh, shells of certain beetles produces red dye. Serves 14 four ounce cocktails, 52 proof, 26% alcohol. This is strong. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's an old fashioned. Pour over ice, use a garnish, and enjoy. Bag in box. It says bag in box. I don't know why it says that. Where else would it be? This one comes out of the side hatch. Oh, that comes out fast. Wow. That was insanity. Let's give it a stir. It looks like April. Or Campari, yeah. yeah. It looks like coconut extract. Salut. Ooh. There's an herby note in there that I don't think I've ever detected in another Negroni. However, it is recognizable as a Negroni. It's just a different Negroni. I'm gonna throw a twist of lemon on it. I think a little twist helps us on this one. So Lou again. No, lemon was a mistake. Orange might've been okay, lemon was a mistake. I put that in the middle of the Negronis I've had. It's serviceable Negroni. It's a powerful Negroni, it's full strength. Some people might want them a little bit more bitter. This is less bitter. Yeah, less bitter, more herby. Maybe a little sweet. Gin, bitter liqueur, white wine, natural flavors, coconut electric. Yeah, I, I think whatever's going on with those, the flavors that they're trying to do vermouth, because I don't think they bought vermouth. Because a lot of people now too, they make a Negroni with um, Carpano Antica. And that's a very vanilla heavy vermouth. If that's your Negroni, you won't like this. Because that doesn't, that's a, a sweeter, more vanilla balances the bitter pretty well. This is much more herby. Like this is a, a very um, herbal Negroni. There's notes in there. I don't know that they are wormwood, but maybe it's anisette. Maybe it's some kind of fennel that kind of, you know, flavors that go along with wormwood from time to time. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe. Not the best, uh, definitely not the worst. The daiquiri in a box, that I get. The margarita in a box, even though it's not a margarita, I get that. And I get the rosé, the sangria, the rose, because those are all things that belong in a box at a party, right? A Negroni? You got enough friends that like Negronis <laughs> that you need a box of 14 of them. It's a pretty specific drink. I know a lot of people who like to drink. I don't know what I would do with a box of 14 Negroni. <laughs> I'm imagining a TikTok account. It's shirtless dudes in board shorts with very chiseled muscles, and they are on a boat they can't afford. And they have cigars, drinking tumblers filled with box Negroni. That's what I think is happening with this box of Negronis. There's probably a ton of people who go into the bar like, oh yeah, I want a Negroni. And what happens then is they either pretend they knew what they were talking about, it's a drink they love, or they never order it again. 
it's the dry martini of my youth. Because Maybe. like when I would go to weddings when I was like 22 and I'd be like, oh, the martini. And I fucking hated it, but I had to act like I liked it because it was like the sophisticated drink to have. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's what it is. Negroni is not an accessible cocktail for most people. I agree. I agree. I think it's interesting that the Negroni has achieved such a level of popularity. To most people who don't have like a really like tuned cocktail palette, a Negroni is going to taste basically like a shot of Fernet. <laughs> it just tastes like bitter poison. I can pull it apart. I like it. I enjoy Negroni. I never reach for one. It's never my go-to. Got that Caribbean soul, man. I'm a human reptile. I just need the sun and pineapple daiquiris all day long. But I can see the box existing because enough people like, oh, I saw in the internet Negroni. We can get this box of Negronis. I'm going to try it. Whiskey bullets. Yeah. Whiskey stones. Whiskey stones exist. Sure. My assumption is that it's feeding bro culture. For the boys, for the blokes. Do we have, um, so that was it, we had the four, we're done? Wow. Beatbox? What is this? There were more boxes in the store, so I got them. 11% by volume, Cranberry Dreams. More episode! Uh, I guess we're doing the whole line of these beatbox cocktails coming up next, beatboxes. It's funny that when you said heads up, I put my head down. <laughs> I think that's probably usually what happens. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. This one is peach punch. It punched me. Well, beatbox. Um, there's a thing called nutcrackers, which are a phenomenon of Brooklyn and the Bronx, I think. It's a sort of illicit uh, practice where guys and, and people, people will make batches, huge batches of fruit punch, bottle them up into juice boxes, and then they'll go and show up at like basketball games or at street parties and just like sell them out of the trunk of their car. When I look at these, I think this is the legal nutcrackers, and I wonder if that's what we're looking at right here. It also makes sense, like, in a beach or shore town because there's a lot of laws about glass on beaches. I didn't even think about that. You're so, a genius. That's, we had a box wine we always bought, and that was why it existed. Because of the glass on the beach. Right. That makes sense. I didn't even think about that, yeah. Yeah, it's a cocktail in a box. We gotta do it. Do I put it on ice or do I just drink it? I think you just drink it. Should we start with the one that's out in front here, this fresh watermelon? Sure. Sure, let's have some fresh watermelon. I don't know what it is, but it's definitely a cocktail at 11.1%. It says there's three servings in here, so be careful. <laughs> if you finish this, don't do that. The party better together, please drink responsibly. I like that. Wow, that smells like watermelon. It does not tell me what kind of alcohol it is. It just says it contains alcohol. It matches my watch, though. I love that. Okay, get These closer guys to that. go together. Fresh cut grass in there, I don't like. You get that, sometimes with the watermelon flavored stuff. It's a little harsh, it's a little harsh. This has got some notes in there. It's sweet, it's medicinal. It is recognizable in that it is making an effort to taste like watermelon. And it doesn't taste very watermelony. It's fairly sweet, but I actually have to say it's less sweet than like a Seagram's Escapes or a Margaritaville wine cooler. Like a lot less sweet, like by an order of magnitude. So between the two, I have to say I would pick this, but there is a, a weird note in there that I don't love. It's a little acrid, maybe? Yeah, a little acrid. That fresh cut grass note. What a lovely smell. I love the smell. I can't stand it when I taste it usually. And in here, it's not even quite actually fresh cut grass taste. It is adjacent to that somehow and made more acrid, more chemical, more harsh. I don't you know. It, you know what it smells like? It smells and tastes a little bit. It smells a lot like it. It tastes a little bit like Pepto-Bismol. If you told me Pepto-Bismol was an ingredient in this, I would believe it. I'm sticking with that. Ooh, yeah, I don't like it. I don't like it. That is really bad. You wanna try it? I'm gonna throw it back at you. Yeah, throw it back. What do you think? No, that's very bad. <laughs> I was downplaying it. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna open up the next one. I'm gonna do the blue, blue raspberry with Z's. Uh, here we go. This is gonna make me ill. I don't love the blue raspberry flavor. <gasps> oh man, please don't buy this. Don't buy this. That's bad. Oh man, that's not good at all. That's, that's bad. Sure, sure. You get that blue raspberry flavor. The mild acridness that was in the watermelon. Here, it's much more pronounced. The blue raspberry seems to accentuate it. I don't know, man. This, this one tastes like medicine that you're not supposed to eat. Nintendo Switch, they put a flavor 
on the cartridges to keep kids from putting them in their mouth. It tastes like something that you would put on something to keep somebody from putting it in their mouth. <laughs> it tastes like a warning. It truly, I, mean, I, I can't exactly put my finger on what the flavor profile is. It no good. Beatbox. Tropical beatboxing. Probably the best of the three so far. Very strong fake ass pineapple. And it's really hard for me to not just be like, fuck this, you know, and have this right here. It reminds me of those yellow banana candies, uh, runts. Wasn't there a pineapple in there sometimes too? Yeah, it tastes like that kind of a pineapple. It tastes like chemicals pretending to be pineapples. There is a anger in this pineapple. There is an anger in it. It's got sharp and spiky edges. I can't imagine wanting something pineapple-y, reaching for this and being happy about the experience. It tastes a little bit like the Haritos pineapple soda. And if you happen to like those Haritos pineapple sodas, this might be for you. It was ready. <laughs> Beatbox pink. Let's do the pink one. Pink lemonade. Okay. That one's fine. I register that as pink lemonade. It's not real lemons and you get that weird artificial lemon flavor at the end of the flavor profile. If you're looking for pink lemonade, you probably will not actually be unhappy about this. I got nothing else for this guy. I'm done with this guy. Cross-examination over. The defense rests. Okay, now we're doing the peach puncha. Peachy, it's punchy, it's peachy punchy punch. I like peaches as a flavor, so I'm I'm intrigued. No. Recognizably peachy, but no. It tastes like you did something like took some Everclear and soaked it in peaches or something. Like imagine if you took the flavor of peaches and you made that into a dotted line, and you filled the empty spots on that flavor's dotted line with nail polish remover, acetone. That's what it tastes like. It tastes like someone used acetone to poke holes in the flavors of peach. Yeah, there's something about it that sets off warning signals. <laughs> Hard to really describe that flavor because in fairness, it's a flavor you spend all of your life avoiding. Uh, poison. Uh, this one really matches. Look at that. Wow. We have found the perfect match for the watch. I hope this one I like. All right, we got Beatbox. Which one is this? This one is, oh, this is the first one you threw at me. This is Cranberry Dreams. I want to like these too, honestly. I do love like the whole hyper color revival. This is what Pee Wee Herman would keep in the fridge at his playhouse when he grows up. It tastes more like a pine tree. That tastes like a goddamn Christmas tree in a blender which is probably not the pine. I don't think you're supposed to eat pine. It's bad for you. That is in no way cranberry-esque. That is friggin' gross. That's really bad. That tastes like pine saw floor cleaner or something. I can't, I don't want any more of that. That's not good. This is objectively bad. Very comfortable telling you this is garbage. <sighs> I think the blueberry might be the one that would be worse than that for me, but. Yes, and the I pink agree. lemonade was the best. Yeah, everything else kind of falls in between them. Those Blue Raz and Cranberry Dream, bottom of the, the heap for those. Pink Lemonade, best of the heap, and then the other three kind of, you can pick, take your pick, they're in the middle there. Of everything we tasted today, unbelievably good. Outrageously, un, unfair that this is in a box. I was shocked by how good this is. I can't endorse this product enough. These Stiggins, that's not the cheap shit, man. People go for that, that is cool. Genuinely excellent actually excellent going from here directly up into my fridge to be enjoyed later not bad the negroni in a box just do we need it do we need it this one i hated i truly hated this i didn't like that one at all the strawberry rose song it's just too sweet and very weirdly fakely strawberry i actually thought that the margarita was weirdly drinkable and fine just extremely perplexing because it's actually just white wine Thank you so much for watching. That's the show. I'm on Instagram, Twitch, Patreon, TikTok, and Twitter. Whatever I'm at, it's appearing right here before your very eyes. And I've been making this show coming up now on seven years. The anniversary of the show is coming up. So there are a lot of episodes, like hundreds of episodes of this show. Uh, and here are four of them for you to check out. Should you like, comment, and subscribe? Why not? But I'm not gonna twist your arm about it. You do what you like. I hope you enjoyed. And I hope to see you very soon with another episode of HTD, like next week. I'll be right back. Okay. Thank you so much for watching. Say goodnight, Meredith. Goodnight, Meredith. <laughs>